Hey, what's up, guys? Phil Bailey, architect, major at Academy of Art University, and today is February 24th, 2013. And today, with the artist mind, we're going to be talking about um, Academy of Art University's online education, what to expect from it, um, is it good, is it worth the money, um, is it worth online classes versus going on campus if you have maybe a lower budget and you can't necessarily afford to live on campus right away. Uh, that's kind of my situation. I'm actually, I'm in Moreno Valley, which is about seven hours away from San Francisco, so obviously I'm a bit too far to be on campus, but um, I've been doing online classes now for two semesters. I'm going to tell you about my experiences with that. Uh, we're going to talk about, um, for those of you who already are students, um, that are online students, uh, we want to talk about how to be successful in the online discussions and some of the things that maybe you guys don't think about, like how your participation is affecting the grades of students who <laughs> are on discussions a lot and and apply and reply frequently compared to other students who maybe wait to like the last day uh, to make discussion posts. That kind of hurts our participation participation points. We're going to talk a little bit about some of my fall semester work here. I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. Um, let's see, what else? We're going to talk about our sponsors. We're going to talk about um, just kind of like what I think I'm going to get myself into with the next week or two uh, with class and how things have been going. So let's jump right into online education at Academy of Art. Is it the best? Is it the best I've ever had? Is it worth the money? What does it cost? Okay, well, it cost $2,229 per credit as an undergraduate, um, well, sorry, not per credit, per class, and that class is about a four credit, three credit, four credit class, something along those lines. It's around, it's around that range. Okay, so pretty much, like, is it worth it? Well, I'm saving money because I don't have to be on campus paying the on-campus lab fees, which can be up to $300 I've seen per class, so I get to save $300 per class, and currently I'm taking two, so it saves me $600 for the semester that I don't necessarily have right now. Um, one of the advantages of being an online student is that uh, my schedule is completely on me. So if I decide to sleep in one day out of the week, then I can do that. But I just know that I'm going to have to submit all my work on the submission days, which this semester they changed it to. Monday is the first day of the semester, and Sunday is the last day. Sorry, that's wrong. Monday is the first day of the module, which is also the first day of the week. And Sunday is the last day of the module, and it is the last day to submit work for grades. It's like that every single week. We have 15 weeks per semester, being in California. So, yeah, I mean, I love it. I love the fact that I can set my own schedule, you know, where I live. I can go out and I can go do a workout. You know, I've got two pools out there. I can go swim if I want to. I've got the mall kind of close by. I can go jog up there, whatever and really just kind of enjoy life a little bit more without having to worry about going from building to building or maybe having to worry about those extra fees I was just telling you about. But the downside is there's some classes as an architect that I'm not going to be able to take online right now because our architect undergrad program is still new. We've had our master's program in architecture for more than a few years now, but the the architecture program itself for undergrads, which is, which is what I am, it's only been around for about three years or so. So I think that maybe people from the undergrad department will start to graduate between this year and next year, so therefore our undergrad program will be completely accredited. Right now they say it's accredited with all accreditations, pretty much uh, all of our schools are, all of the 19 or 20, however many schools that we have now. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think it's worth it to be an online student. You just have to think about 
okay, if you really want to go to Academy of Art, you know that it's, it's probably the school for you, you understand that, um, you know, it, it may be an easy school to get into, but let me tell you, it is not an easy school to stay at. I've, I've already seen a few people who have been here who have not been able to continue. I've seen people just kind of get fed up with maybe feeling like this is not necessarily for them. I've seen people that maybe just decided that, you know, hey, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try a different school. Maybe I'll come back to Academy of Art. I'm going to try a different school. Uh, I've seen a lot of different situations, but I'll just say that I think that it doesn't matter what school you go to. You're going to have financial aid issues. Maybe you, you might have communication issues with professors. You might have... Um, you may have, you know, expensive fees being on campus versus online. I think that that is all to be counted for when taking an online class or taking any online education. Um, I do think that just like analog versus digital, you are going to get a better signal for audio production from analog gear than you are from digital gear. However, some people prefer the cleanness of a digital signal versus an analog signal. It's all about preference. But um, in our field of study, you know, building this physical model here before me is a lot better than just doing it on AutoCAD on the computer because here in the physical form, I actually get to, you know, physically see it, kind of look around different angles, kind of see how things may be oriented among this space. I can kind of, you know, look underneath it and, and get a better understanding of this space whereas on a computer I can't do that so it doesn't really matter what field you're in whether you're in illustration whether you're in architecture whether you're in um, animation or whatever I think it's good to have you know clay building skills model building skills you know good drawing skills like I got my paper right there you know there's no substitute for good hard um, hardcore traditional training and that's what Academy of Art does like some people feel like the, the professors are jerks or rude or blunt. I said before in other videos that our professors are assholes. And what I meant by assholes is that in a kindly way, you know, like you might be talking with your friend and you're like, yeah, this, this my dress make me look fat. And you're like, it kind of does. And you're like, you're an asshole. I'll change my dress. You know what I mean? You're, you're not going to argue so much because they're your good friends. So you, you should just know that the professors at Academy of Art have your back. They're not gonna, they're not gonna tell you that your drawing is really good if it's not good. If your drawing is crappy, if the lines need to be straighter, if your lines look a little bit fuzzy, if the line weights, meaning the thickness of the line, is not as it should be, they're gonna let you know. We have no problem saying, you know what, it's a good start, but you know it definitely needs some improvement, and you just have to take it and just kind of like okay so my drawing is okay I need improvement but you know I spent three hours on it and I thought I did a really good job well if I spent three hours on that drawing and it was just okay do I need to spend six hours or do I just need to be a little bit more careful about my lines should I just pay a little bit more attention to you know how am I gonna put that compass on the paper and what kind of a pressure am I gonna apply to it that's the kind of stuff to think about don't just think that professors are, are jerks or assholes or whatever just because they give you a bad critique and you would want them to give you bad critiques personally I want them to give me bad critiques I want to know that when I show them a model like this model I built it in like two or three days um, I had two weeks to build it or something like that but the point is when I built it I spent those two days very wisely I mean I was up 20 like literally 48 hours building this model why did I do that because I know that I had a friend, shout out to my friend, I'm not going to say her name, but she is a master student. She was telling me she had to build about four or five of these size buildings for one week, one assignment, and on a larger scale, you know what I mean? So being a master student, you're going to have to do a lot more. It's really windy outside, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's kind of scary. But um, yeah, she had to build a lot of these big buildings in a short amount of time so I said you know what I'm going to enjoy life a little bit I'm going to do some portfolio development I'm going to work on my own ideas I'm going to go work it out and then I'm going to spend a good hardcore one day to two days on my assignments and get it done because right now I'm just taking two classes that's nothing 
I have friends who are taking four classes, and I've heard of somebody even taking five classes. Academy recommends we take five classes for my degree to get done in about five years. That is a lot of work. I mean, that is a lot of work, and it's a lot of money. So maybe my degree might take me six years. Maybe it might take, yeah, maybe it might take six years. Who knows? I don't know. But what I do know is when I finish my degree, I know that I'm going to have the best amount of um, education. I'm going to have a high quality education. My professors are all professionals. They work at the, you know, the top firms. They went to the top schools like Yale, Columbia. You know, I've had professors who are overseas doing work in Europe and all these really cool things. They have really interesting backgrounds. So I have to appreciate where they came from and what skills they bring into the table when they come to teach me. So when they tell me that, you know, this particular edge here looks a bit rough, it's not very professional, I have to listen to that and say, you know what, you're right, it's not very professional and it is a bit rough. The only reason why I did it this way is because I wanted the construction to fulfill my vision. I didn't necessarily think it was going to make my vision, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to make my model look unprofessional. Um, let me just show you a few angles here. Uh, so this is the top view. Actually, this project uh, was built on the concept of the nine square grid, which means that you take a nine square grid, you take a three by three array, and you basically use that nine square grid to align different elements of this building to other elements. And I use, you know, triangular shapes and geometry. Um, I think it's a very cool. Um, it's a very cool design and you know your average student me compared to your average student your average student would you know listen to this assignment and say okay what do we have to do they're like you have to build a building using the nine square grid and you have to um, you know make it kind of solid and you got to use basswood and we want you to use a certain kind of construction paper or whatever and your average student might look at this project and, and see it as something where let me just do the basics, let me just do some kind of basic grid and let me just, you know, put put a little thing here and put a little thing there, maybe not really paying attention to what they're actually doing. But personally, I looked at this and said, Well man, what if a client came to me with all the money and said, Yo, Phil, I got about this much money and I really like your style of design. I want you to design me a building that's going to be this LEED certified building. I want you to. I want to see glass. I want to see, you know, columns and fire and water. And I want it to be really cool. Do whatever you want to do, but it has to be built with a nine square grid. And you basically got to stay within a budget. Or let's just say, hey, no budget. Screw it. So, me as a designer, I see my class assignments as professional work. I see it as a pre-professional portfolio. Pre-professional portfolio. That means that though I'm still a student, though I'm still an architect student, I may not have a license to practice architecture professionally, but that does not mean that I cannot work on ideas that are seriously going to be in my portfolio once I become licensed. That's the kind of mindset that I have. This building is a real building to me. This building is called the Diamond Ring. And this building is a one, two level uh, building where you've got kind of this like restaurant kind of um, area here. This whole thing is like all glass. You've got a glass roof which has solar panels. We've got a grid here which could potentially heat water uh, with the sun. We've got um, the very center, uh oh, my model's coming apart because it's a very, very fragile model. Um, the center piece down below, you'll notice that hole there, that represents kind of where you put the finger uh, as, as a diamond ring. And so that hole has a waterfall that falls down the center. That waterfall can help generate energy for the building. Um, it's also tranquil. Uh, if people happen to be walking around the tops or the bottoms, they may feel a mist, which will, in a warm environment would keep uh, keep them quite a bit warm and um, you know I, I literally just had an epiphany to start focusing all of my class assignments as if they were real projects because as I tell all of my colleagues or all of my peers at school 
people that say, man, how do you have such a good portfolio or how do you have the time to actually build a portfolio? Well, use your class assignments as a portfolio, simple as that. Um, spend the extra hours, you know, lose a little bit of sleep and actually really come up with something great. Because here's the thing, we have things like industry on campus and spring showcase where people from representatives from all these other kind of companies are going to come to the school, they're going to look at the portfolios of all of our peers, they're going to say, okay, here's student A, B, and C. Clearly student A and B have very similar works. They, they clearly understand the principles of what the school is wanting them to do. They clearly have maybe a good attention to detail, but student C, excuse me, I got like a little bit of gas in my system, but like student C is like way up here. They're like way up here. I don't even, you can't even see my hand. That's how far you are. It's like, yo, modern masterpiece. It, whoa, it's gonna break my model. Like, no, no joke, no joke. But like, yeah, like, you know, student C is like way up here. You can't even see the model because it's so hot, it's so up there, you know? That's the kind of mindset that I bring to every single project. That's what I recommend everybody do. I just, I can't say it enough. Like, school is not just where you learn. School is where you, you know, further develop yourself. It's where maybe you were younger and you wanted to be this, uh, you know, this career, this career-oriented person from, from day one. Maybe you didn't from day one. Maybe you just grew up and you went through high school, you went through junior college to take general courses and you said, you know what, I want to be a painter. I don't really like digital arts. I don't really like to sculpt things, but I love painting. I love that I can take colors and different brush strokes and I can have certain, you know, feelings portrayed in these different gestures. That's what I love to do. So now I'm going to go to school to be a painter, so I'm going to take some fine art classes, you know, but you want to see everything that you do as the professional you want to be of tomorrow. Like, however you want to be in the future, you got to be that today. You got to wake up every morning, God willing, that, you know, whatever it is you want to be with yourself, you wake up feeling like that. Like, I wake up every day saying, modern masterpiece. You know, this, this, this year, 2013, you know, I'm going to be making, you know, 2000 3000 6000 dollars per month with my company, Modern Masterpiece. I'm not licensed to actually sell floor plans and do architecture. However, there's no law that says that I can't do AutoCAD for a person's project. They say, hey, Phil, I have an idea for a building or for, you know, an idea. Can you help me make it in 3D? I say, sure, I can. I can do it for this cost, you know. Having said that, the disclaimer is I am not an engineer, I am not a licensed architect, and no, nor can I claim that I am a licensed architect until I get that license from the state that I am, which right now is in California. Whoop whoop. And so, having said all that, I can still provide services to people relating to my field. Maybe it's not selling a floor plan, but maybe I can just sell an idea. Maybe I can just do some 3D modeling. Maybe I can build a physical model of an idea. Um, you just have to be really innovative and think about yourself on a larger scale. Think about yourself as like, not only am I a fruit, piece of fruit in a bowl, but I'm like the whole freaking basket, the whole bowl of fruit. This is a freaking heavy bowl. Wow. I didn't even know how heavy that was. But that's really all I wanted to say. Um, I'm going to wrap this up because I know I'm getting into a very long discussion, which I normally do. I can't help it. I'm very passionate about what I do. I'm very passionate about helping. If people like this video, they like my uh, my angle of philosophy when it comes to design and being like an entrepreneur, then I appreciate that. You know, um, every week or every other week, I'm going to produce a really good video like you might see in the link up here. Uh, episode one of The Artist's Mind is the first episode. It's got music. I have different examples of things, different angles of me, and we're going to continue to do that. And um, I'm going to continue to make good videos so that way they're not boring to follow. Um, I know these videos can be kind of boring without having some kind of background music or some kind of different motion and stuff like that, but this is literally just a place for me to speak my mind about design, and those who are interested can skim through 
and maybe they find a few points that I'm saying to be valid, so then they want to keep watching, they want to keep subscribing, please do subscribe. Um, what else are we going to talk about here? Uh, so, so what are we going to be, what am I going to be looking at for the next week? I don't know. I'm thinking a lot about my final project for IAD or LA161, which is Sacred Geometry, which here, we have to do a final project where we have to incorporate sacred geometry, sacred geometry into our designs. Now, my only question about sacred geometry as an architect is, sacred usually means something like religious or higher value, higher consciousness, or things along those lines. But for people that are not religious, does that mean that a sacred building would be something that they didn't like or you know is it, or or now do we live in a world where you know r regardless of whatever religion you are I mean architecture utilizes sacred geometry because of its nice proportions and because it has certain qualities that you know certain balances that make it make a building have a certain energy a certain flow is that where we are with architecture nowadays or is sacred geometry something still that if you build a place that way people are automatically going to perceive it as being sacred. And I, and I bring this up because my dream house that I am designing right now, I'm thinking about using that as my proposal for my final project, but by me making my, my dream house more sacred with sacred geometry, does that mean that people will perceive my house as being more holy or more of like a safe haven kind of place? Or could it just simply be a really cool design that's a very curvilinear design. I'll definitely show you guys more of that. You can check out my Behance profile to uh, to uh, see that it's called Bailey Villa Bailey Villa de Aqua Corriente. It stands for Bailey's Villa of Flowing Waters. Um, so you can definitely check that out and let me know what you guys think about that particular subject. I think I'm I'm very interested in that because I I don't want to like design things. I don't, I don't want to design with certain aspects of design or engineering that kind of has different connotations to it. Like, I don't want, you know, to start building things with sacred geometry exclusively, but then people are like, whoa, this guy is building all these religious things, and he doesn't just do things that are just like fine art, or he doesn't do, you know, I'm like, I don't know what to expect. I'm, I'm new to this. Like, I've never had any training with architecture ever. This is literally like my second semester, so like my, let's see, 18 weeks now, basically 18 weeks I've been studying architecture in my whole life, uh, professionally, uh, as a student, but uh, since I was younger, I've always been drawing, I've always been working on ideas, I've always been an engineer at heart too, you know, I've always tried to develop technologies that I thought would be beneficial that are just now becoming a trend, so that just told me right there that I was definitely onto something good from an early age. Um, and that's what I'm going to say to you guys out there. I'm going to go ahead and get ready for bed. And sometimes when I'm tired, I ramble. Sometimes when I'm inspired, I ramble a lot. And that's why this is just a vlog. It's just a little snippet just to kind of show people that may be following me um, how my thought process is as a student, as an architect, as an engineer, <laughs> as an entrepreneur. And um, yeah, definitely keep following me. My muscles hurt like heck because I've been freaking playing racquetball and slap a bat bat and like, you know, it's all up in there, all up in there. Like my freaking abs freaking hurt and I'm wearing my scarf because it's very cold outside, it's very windy and um, I need all the warmth I can get. So definitely stay tuned till um, our next full episode, episode two of The Artist Maya. I'm Phil Bailey and I'll see you guys next time.